Star Tribune found a significant racial bias in identification of special education needs. For example, white children were found far more likely to be class classified as autistic, while black children were far more likely to be classified EBD, or Emotional Behavior Disorder. What do you think is causing this outcome, and what should the school board do about it? It's, it's, it's part of a... Um, uh, um part of a, a broader picture where there's racial discrimination and, and discrimination on the basis of economic class. Um, with uh, the EBD diagnosis, children are class of pigeonholed, but they often don't get the services that they require. Um, Minneapolis uh, Public Schools has um, EBD rooms where um, kids with emotional behavioral disorders are are segregated and that's considered a bad practice. Uh, I've worked as an educational associate in um, Edina and Richfield Public Schools a few years ago and they didn't do that with EBD students unless there were other you know issues with them that made it impossible to integrate them into this population. Um, you know they would have uh, education associates with the students in the classrooms and you know that kind of support doesn't exist so far as I've heard in the Minneapolis public schools. Um, so that's um, um, now in I think the year 2000, 25 percent of African American students and nearly 40 percent of African males were uh, classified as having emotional behavioral disorders and enrolled in special ed. Now that's absolutely crazy. Um, and the um, you know, and I think part of that over-identification is because you have classrooms that are dysfunctional, too much exposure to inexperienced teachers, for example. <clears throat> so, you know, we need to, uh, you know, upgrade the uh, regular ed programs and also get more support in the special ed department. There are many instances in which white children and children of color see different outcomes in si similar situations. And I believe this particular instance is among the most troubling. First and foremost, we need to be aware of how implicit biases are impacting decisions in our schools. EBD and autism classifications are made by teams of psychologists, principals, teachers, and parents. The role of the district is to ensure that when a classification process begins, those teams have access to the same information as well as to ensure that they have all the information they need to make the best decision for the individual student. Well, what is most concerning to me is that our children are overwhelmingly being diagnosed with disorders no matter what color they are. Um, I recently read an article where Minnesota was first in autism and you look at the numbers of our special needs children in the district and they're quite shocking and almost unbelievable to the degree where I really think that what we need to be asking is, is there a possibility for some of our children to be declassified out um, of this label? I had a conversation with the special needs ESP at Jefferson and I precisely asked him this question. Has, in his experience, has there ever been a child who was once labeled special needs and then not? And he said that he only knew of one experience, um, or one case in his experience, where the child was actually not special needs. She was just extremely shy. Um, another clear example where I think race plays a part in the diagnosis is ELL students. A lot of times ELL students are being classified or labeled as special needs when in reality it's a language barrier. What do we need to do about it? Again, we need to reevaluate the classifications and um, promote more social and emotional support for various classifications and also train uh, our administrators on um, you know, what is really going on with this child. There's also broader data, national data, uh, that shows an identification, a rising identification of autism in white and Somali children. So there was some, there's some differentiation there. 
but again, we have had uh, we have had a behavior standards or discipline policy that has not had the requisite tools to support interventions as opposed to punitive measures. So we are moving away from that and also inter, uh, reintroducing social emotional curriculum into the schools that has been absent for a while. So I think those things are really going to help us respond differently to kids. The other is there's a lot of uh, cultural pieces. If you lower class sizes, the teacher has more time to understand, understand maybe what a child is going through when they walk in the room and not uh, uh, do nurturing instead of teaching, but do both so that a child can truly focus and learn and also get their, again, underlying needs addressed, which is something that is very difficult to do when you don't have the resources and the partnerships and the um, class management because of overcrowding. I, I think first off, it, it comes, it boils down to a, a cultural and social economic issue uh, in dealing with backgrounds of children from different cultural backgrounds. Uh, one thing we need to do is we need to really train uh, our people that are, are giving all these diagnoses. I think we need to really train them to recognize the cultural um, differences. Uh, you know, and the same thing can be said for Native American children, uh, Latino children, um, in regards to being, you know, misdiagnosed is what the Star and Tribune ha has said. Uh, I think we definitely need to really look at this issue hard and how we train to train our administrator, our staff to uh, identify them correctly and to make sure that they are being diagnosed correctly and that the treatment plans are followed through uh, with the, rest, with the um, correct diagnosis.